Okay, Fred, uh, thanks very much for joining me uh, on uh, my little chat regarding just the mental side of goal kicking. Um, so, first of all, I just want to know what you think it takes to be a top-level goal kicker. Um, I think, I think obviously, to, to be a goal kicker in any situation, you've got to, you've got to have confidence. Um, you know, you've got to obviously have a natural ability to, to kick a ball, but I think that confidence, as you know, you go from uh, it, everyone sees the the match winning kicks and all that sort of stuff and, and dreams of that, but sometimes it's 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 not all that. It's a lot of practice, a lot of hard work, um, and obviously it's a very close skill. So you know when you when you miss, everyone knows about it. You know you can't you can't cover it up. So no. um, definitely confidence to be sort of keep stepping up even when it's even when it's going going bad. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's the main thing. You've got to have confidence in your ability and. Yeah, be the guy who steps up and, and keeps the scoreboard ticking over for the team. It is, um, it is funny. John Callard actually said to me uh, for quite a few years back now, when we first started kicking when I was sort of young 20s, is he was like, It's not about your good kicks, it's about your bad kicks, you know, because it's, it's those ones that you the, the, the crowd are all clapping and cheering, and the, the flags go up, and the referee blows his whistle, and you're running back going. Oh fuck me! I got away with that one. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Super, super oblivious. Um, whereas sometimes you know it's like you strike a hell of a ball. Say there's a bit of a wind, and you go right. I'm going left post, and you strike a ball at the left post, and the wind drops and it stays straight, and it hits the post. Yeah. And everyone boos you, and you're like, well, actually, like that's exactly how I've men a men a kick it. So yeah. I always do say it's, it's about you know it's about your bad kicks, mate. It's the ones that you you know. It's the ones that you don't quite catch, but your technique sort of saves you are, are the important ones. Yeah, and you sort of learn from them a bit more as well, I think. You definitely, they fester with me anyway. Mate, 100%. And like, you know, and they do, they do sit, like, they do sit in your mind. There's no two ways about it. Like, you know, you, you, you shut it out of your head and, and all that stuff, but you're well aware of places that you miss from, pressure, yeah. situations, the game. And that's why, you, that's why you have a technique because, you know, no matter what the scenario is, Technically, it should be the same thing yeah. every single time. Um, but, mate, there's no two ways about it. Any kicker who sits there and says, oh, I completely forget about, you know, everyone's got demons, mate, in all aspects of life. And, and goal kicking yeah. is such a acute skill. If you've missed a couple, as much as you've got to try and shut it out and move on and focus on your technique, you're 100% aware of, of the situation and, and, your, and your relevant kicking form. So with that, like you mentioned then about pressure, like how do you how do you deal with the pressure of goal kicking? So I think two two things for me is a don't hide don't don't necessarily hide from the pressure. Like as in you know people try and um, you know people almost don't want the pressure. You've got to want it. You've got yeah. to want to be in that in that situation. Um, and then the second thing is just having your technique. The minute you've got a technique, you know. Uh, not to contradict what I just said, but obviously you're you're away. you might have missed two in a game, but as soon as someone dots down or the referee gives a penalty and you've got the ball, it's right. The tee comes on right, ball right seems to post. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right, two steps back, I'm two to the side. Right, I'm locking on. There's my target. Like the, that checklist and technique that you go through is what subsides the pressure because you're yeah. focusing on your process, not the outcome in the situation. Yeah, so yeah. that's why that's why technique is 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 so important when it comes to goal kicking. And not saying there's a right and a wrong, but your own technique you need to Dial. be there. Yeah, you need to be there, stood back, however many meters away from the ball, you know, taking your deep breaths or whatever it is, and you need to know that if you do X, Y, and Z, the ball will go through the post. Yeah, it's really interesting what... because like when I when I was growing up. Uh, well, a bit well, a bit younger, sorry. And you know, you get those like game-winning opportunities. I used to love them. I honestly oh. just used to love them. Like touch line, just scored in the corner, last kick to win it. I actually, I used to have it just inside me. I was like, yes, this is what you like. For me, they were always the moments that you practice on your own for hours, or you know, you'd go with your mates kicking, or you'd, you know, you'd sacrifice something, you know, with your mates to go kicking. But those are the moments I absolutely loved. But I still do it now. I still, if I go yeah. out kicking on my own, you end up running the commentary on your own, don't you? Like, <laughs> you can do though, just to, just to build, just to build pressure, and you, you know, 
you try and find ways, you know, over here at the minute in Japan, um, we got a, kid, a, a guy called Joshua Karevi, uh, Samu Karevi's brother, and he's he's doing a bit of goal kicking, and I'll always kick with him because then yeah. it builds a little bit of pressure rather than yeah. on your how many times you've been there, right? You're like last kick of the day, you're like oh, and to win the game, and you miss the yeah. kick, and you're like oh. <laughs> Oh, I need to. Drop. Oh, there's another. Oh, there's a miraculous penalty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whereas when with him, we just say right, X amount of kicks. Yeah. You know, we keep a tally, and it just it just builds you that, um, builds that pressure. So, um, yeah, you've got you've uh, got to enjoy those, those situations. I think that's really key, especially currently. I'm not sure how, how you find it. Obviously, now with your coaching stuff, I actually find so. So you take take um, Josh for instance. So I'm I'm kicking with at the minute. Yeah. He kicks off a higher tee. He's a very, you know, he, he kicks around the corner. The ball naturally sort of yeah, curls man. inwards. Um, bit of a bit of a draw on it. Um, but by trying to help him and talk him through his technique and what I see him do actually sharpens me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I see him yeah. leave the kick early. And that almost, you know, and I find a lot when I'm talking to kids, even if you talk about passing or micro skills and that, you suddenly... Mm. The checklist then goes back through your head of yeah. what you're doing. You it's sometimes it's really good. You learn a lot, 100%. so much. Hundred percent, and like it just it just refocuses the point because you know the base, there is a there are certain blueprints to follow in order to get a successful kick. You know, like not coming out yeah. too early, keeping your head down through the ball. That doesn't that does that counts if you walk into the ball, if you run into the ball, if you kick off a high tee, a low tee. Yeah, Do you know what I mean, there's. There's yeah, certain yeah. fundamentals that, that, that stay with Need every action. There, yeah. so as much as there's variables within it, there, there's a lot of um, fundamentals that, that sort of stick that, that you can hammer. And, and like I said, when you're starting to chat to other people about goal kicking, it just um, re-engages me and refocuses maybe a few things that I've neglected before. Yeah, definitely. So when, when do you reckon you were in your like, best form then, Fred? And like, how did it feel? I think um, I think 2013 it was. I got the golden boot in the Premiership, and that was when you know any kick I'd take, I had. It's a funny one, buddy, because you know was, when you're younger, you're fearless. Eh? You like you come into yeah. the you come into the games. Yeah. If you don't yeah, care if you the miss, risk or the consequences, really. Yeah, if you miss, oh, he's young. It doesn't matter. Whereas, whereas now I'm I'm well aware, especially even like being being over here in Japan and playing for for shuttles. Probably three years into my Gloucester career, I was I had a year on on form, and then my second year or halfway through my second year at Leicester, I, I did a bit bit of work with Paul Grayson, and he he transformed the way I kick. Um, oh, nice. And I still use the process now. Um, so like he was yeah he was very instrumental in in helping me because I was in a bit of a rut at the time. Yeah. I think process is key, mate. I think especially when the pressure's on or you're in a bit of bad form, going back to your like process for me was like a reset and it was a bit of a like something I could fall back on knowing that if I just went through it calmly, you know, 90% of the time, it would go in the direction I'd want the ball to go. Yeah, my, my, so I had, I went, I had a, I had a bad, my last year at Gloucester, the whole decision making to go to Leicester, will I go, won't I go? You know, I, I learned a lot from that as a person, first and foremost, but obviously it really knocked my confidence. So actually when I got to Leicester, I didn't back my process and I didn't back, I, I was always questioning myself. Yeah. And that was the problem is, is you know, I was going all right in games. I was, I was playing reasonably well, not, not terribly, but then in those closed skills, like now if I look back, I could tell that I, I didn't know my process or, or I didn't have confidence in my process. But for me, I needed that, you know, Paul Grayson Simplicity. was just like, yeah. Paul Grayson was like, mate, I'll come, I'll watch you kick for an hour, I won't say anything, and then we'll go from there. And we just put in three three bullet points, really, which was locking onto the ball, controlling into the ball, and then committing to the kick. And it's something I still use now um, to this day, and it's, it's helped me no end, really. Um, you know, I think the main thing is as well, and for any sort of young um, kickers that will watch this is, you know, you're going to be influenced by so many people. You're going to flick the TV on and see Owen Farrell kicking one way. And then you're going to yeah. be at your local rugby club and the first team or the third team goal kicker is going to come and give you another bit of advice. And someone else, your old man's going to tell you to kick 
like this. You have to be like true to yourself. And I always say this, if, if I'm ever coaching young goal kickers, I'm like, look, I will give you pointers, but you have to find your own, your own way. way. You have to find yeah. what works for you and where you feel comfortable because, you know, the way, um, the way you kick wouldn't suit the way I kick. Yeah, because yeah, you kick off a higher tee, you kick off a higher tee. Um, you're you're a lot stricter than me in terms of approach to the ball and kicking and getting through the ball. I kick, you know me, mate. I jump out of it yeah. left, right, and centre, but it works for me. So yeah. young kickers that are gonna that want to progress, a lot of it has to be done on your own. And that's not to say don't listen, but if someone says to you, oh, "I try this," and you do it, and it doesn't feel right, then just no, it doesn't work for me. Yeah, move on. When when do you reckon then you've probably been like at your lowest? I know you mentioned Leicester earlier. Was it was that probably your lowest bit, you reckon? Lowest point goal kicking wise? Yeah, goal kicking wise probably probably then. Um just because just because I didn't I didn't I didn't know what I was trying to achieve from my goal kicking. I was I was all over the shop. I was trying to mm. I was trying to at the time I was I was kind of fighting for a for a spot in the England squad for the World Cup. Um sort of act out of the squad trying to get in it. Um my confidence really dented from the I think um I think it's really key to experiment when you were younger to then try and find your way to be and then which will then bring consistency. Mate, a a hundred percent. And like even now, as much as I have the same blueprint and the same principles that I had with Grace. Of course there's been there's been slight little shifts in 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 how I kick um in terms of my start and how I how I start my approach and stuff like that. But um yeah mate it is it's it's you it's always going to be a work in progress mate and that's not meaning yeah. that it changes every year but it just means that you're always gonna find something. I remember I had a coach I won't name him he was a professional coach absolute bandit of a coach right <laughs> right so 2013, I got the uh, like the golden boot in the premiership. And I was kicking well. I kicked off like a almost like a Percy Montgomery, almost like but not as extreme, but like a two, mm. like probably a three step. Yeah. A three step kick. Um, and suddenly he came up to me out of nowhere and he was like, Yeah, I think you should develop a second kicking style for long range kicks. Right? Bear in mind, I had no issues kicking from range that season, yeah. the, the season before. And I remember that just fried my brain. And that was when I started, you know, I'm there thinking, oh, I've got to do this because I was 22, 23. Yeah, yeah. Real impressionable. And then you actually think, well, no. Nah. Like, once you've found something that works for you, work with it, tweak a few things. But, you know, someone's always going to have an opinion and you have to be be strong-minded to uh, to be like, no, nah, actually, I don't feel comfortable doing that. This is how I feel comfortable kicking it. And no matter what yeah, the yeah. textbook say or what coaches say, if it works for you, mate. If you want to moonwalk into the ball and back heel it over. <laughs> If that's, what, if that's what works, you make do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You've got to be, you know, 